The discovery of a hand in the Egyptian palace, tomb reveals a shocking ancient ritual to humanity. Science is not standing still. Thanks to the most advanced technologies available today, the field of archaeology continues to make fascinating discoveries that humanity has never known, helping us better understand the history of our species. However, world history is always shrouded in unexpected mysteries, leaving scientists amazed to the point of disbelief at what they see. Like the mysterious and eerie rituals of ancient Egyptians, the perfectly preserved mummies that seem as if they were just entombed yesterday, and the tightly guarded tombs whose reasons for protection remain unknown. All of this will be revealed in our video today. The ancient tomb is protected by 3,000 swords. The ancient tomb of King Ngo Haplu, 514 BC, 496 BC, is located beneath a lake in Suzhou, Jiangsu Province, China. According to records, this tomb lies at the foot of Huqiu Mountain. The lake spans 60 paces and has a depth of about 5 meters. Rumor has it that 3,000 precious swords are hidden inside the tomb, which has never been excavated. China has an ancient profession known as tomb raiding. Many ancient tombs have been plundered, but the tomb of King Haplu remains untouched to this day. It is said that after King Haplu passed away, his son, Fusai, recruited millions of laborers from across the country to construct the burial mound at the bottom of the lake. Knowing that his father loved swords, Fusai prepared 3,000 swords to be buried with Haplu, some of which are renowned as unique divine swords. The first person to attempt to excavate Haplu's tomb was King Gojian of Yue. However, after many efforts, he could not even find the entrance to the tomb and eventually gave up. Later, the famous emperor Qin Shi Huang also sought to enter Haplu's tomb. On one occasion, he sent troops to raid the tomb for treasures but was unsuccessful. During the Ming Dynasty, a miraculous event occurred. Legend has it that in 1512, Suzhou experienced a drought that caused the lake surrounding Haplu's tomb to dry up, revealing signs of the burial chamber. Duan Ba Hu, one of the four talents of Suzhou, immediately called for a team to prepare for excavation, but was unexpectedly thwarted by officials at a critical moment. In 1955, experts used machinery to drain the lake and discovered inscriptions left by Duan Ba Hu and many other historical figures. This provided proof that Haplu's tomb truly exists. However, the experts decided to protect this ancient tomb and did not proceed with further excavation. In 1978, a team of experts attempted to excavate Haplu's tomb once again. After clearing mud from the lake's bottom, they discovered a triangular cave. Upon breaking the entrance, they found three massive stone slabs blocking the passage, believed to be the door to the tomb. However, above these stone slabs stood the Huku Tower, a symbol of Suzhou. After careful consideration, the experts decided that breaking the three stone slabs would affect the tower, and they halted the plan to excavate the ancient tomb. To this day, Haplu's tomb remains intact and has never been visited by the outside world. The 3,000 famous swords in the tomb continue to be an unsolved mystery, attracting archaeologists to keep excavating and exploring. The Mysterious Severed Hands Dozens of severed hands were discovered in a burial pit at an ancient Egyptian palace, possibly remnants of a display of victory ritual by foreign invaders. Inscriptions and reliefs on tombs and temples in Egypt depict severed hands dating back to the New Kingdom, around the 16th to 11th centuries BC, but this is the first time archaeologists have found and analyzed actual severed hands. According to the research report, these hands belong to at least seven men and possibly one woman. This indicates that women were not completely excluded from warfare in ancient times. Researchers conducted analyses on the hands, which were first discovered in 2011 in three separate burial pits in the courtyard of the Hyksos Palace in northeastern Egypt. This palace dates back to the 15th dynasty, 1640-1530 BC, when the Hyksos kings ruled areas from Lower and Middle Egypt to the city of Kusay. The Hyksos are believed to have been invaders of ancient Egypt, and they were the first foreign rulers of the region. According to a team of German and Austrian researchers, the severed hands belonged to at least 12 adults, with the remaining fingers and hands indicating that up to 18 individuals may have had their hands severed. While it is not unusual for body parts to decompose and be displaced over time due to flooding, decay, weathering, or erosion, 
The researchers suggest that these severed hands may have been intentionally gathered together. They were placed in the ground with fingers splayed and palms facing down. Additionally, researchers found a complete set of eight wrist bones among six of the 12 hands discovered, but no arm bones were present. The team believes that the hands were deliberately severed, reflecting a level of brutality that shows a disregard for the victim's lives. This method was quick and easy, but it left part of the forearm attached to the hand. If the victims were indeed executed in this manner, those carrying out the act or the officiants may have intentionally arranged the hands in this position. These hands were buried shortly after being severed from the bodies before rigor mortis set in. Rigor mortis begins a few hours after death and peaks between 12 and 24 hours later, depending on factors like humidity, temperature, me, and the physical condition of the deceased. However, the position of the hands suggests they were still pliable when buried. Researchers argue that the location, manner of execution, and possibly the positioning of the severed hands do not support the hypothesis that this was a legal punishment for crimes. The 700-Year-Old Beauty of China In 2011, while expanding a road in Taizhou, Jiangsu Province, China, a group of workers accidentally unearthed a coffin at a depth of about 2 meters. At that point, no one touched the site again. They contacted experts from the Taizhou Museum to handle the discovery. Upon their arrival, the archaeological team confirmed that this was indeed an ancient coffin. However, what they found inside was even more surprising. Wrapped around the mummified body were multiple layers of cloth and fine silk. Surrounding the coffin was a layer of brown liquid. After carefully removing the silk layers, the experts discovered a well-preserved female corpse. Even more astonishing, the mummy was nearly intact, adorned with jewelry. Notably, the deceased's eyebrows and eyelashes had not fallen out. The estimated height of the mummy was about 1.5 meters. For research purposes, the experts named her the Taizhou Mummy. Some local newspapers referred to her as the Beauty of China. Based on the artifacts, jewelry, and silk clothing found, archaeologists believe the woman lived during the Ming Dynasty, 1368 to 1644, making the mummy approximately 700 years old. Among her jewelry, a distinctive green ring stood out. From her clothing, it was clear that she belonged to the noble class of that time. The well-preserved condition of the body has provided valuable insights into life and the social hierarchy of the Ming Dynasty. Inside the coffin, researchers also found bones, ceramics, ancient texts, and other relics. At that time, the archaeological team could not determine whether the mysterious brown liquid was used for preserving the body or simply groundwater that had seeped in over the years. More than a decade has passed, and Chinese archaeologists continue to study the Taizhou mummy, but many questions remain unanswered. Since the discovery, interest has grown regarding how the body has remained intact from the Ming era to the present. What were the rituals involved in the mummification process? According to Wang Weiyin, the director of the Taizhou Museum, mummification techniques during that time were highly advanced. In the Ming Dynasty, mummies were typically wrapped in silk and some cotton. Some researchers suggest that the mummy may have been preserved naturally due to burial in an appropriate environment. If the temperature and oxygen levels in the water were moderate, bacteria could not thrive, slowing or even halting the decomposition process. For a long time, experts have posed many questions about the circumstances surrounding the preservation of the body, including the identity and social status of the woman, as well as the cause of her death. Unfortunately, the remote location where the mummy was found, with no other remains nearby, has complicated the search for answers. The Sacred Well of the Maya Religion played a significant role in the spiritual life of the Maya people of Itza. According to ancient Maya texts, droughts were believed to be caused by the wrath of the water god. To appease this deity, they would have to offer a 14-year-old virgin girl into the well. The ancients believed that the girl thrown into the well would become a servant of the water god, living a life of luxury and comfort. However, even during stable weather conditions without droughts or disasters, the Maya priests would still choose a beautiful girl to thank the water god. People from all around would gather at the temple next to the sacred well. This temple measured 60 meters long and 30 meters high, featuring carvings of the water god, depicted as a winged serpent. The selected girl wore a lavish outfit and waited in the temple. Beside her stood many strong young men clad in golden armor, 
ready to safely escort the goddess's bride to the sacred well. The ceremony would begin at dawn, with the water god's bride placed in a floral palanquin and blessed by the priests. The poor girl was even given a magical drink to help her stay calm. The procession would carry her to the well along a path 400 meters long. Upon arrival, the young girl would be tossed into the air by the young guardians and then fall freely into the sacred well. At that moment, drums would sound and the crowd would dance and sing, with wealthy attendees throwing gold and jewels into the well to seek peace. From the mid-16th century, European colonizers conquered South America, leading to the decline of Maya cities like Chichen Itza. After that, no one organized live sacrifices at the sacred well anymore. Archaeological studies have revealed over 100 human skeletons at the bottom of the well, along with numerous treasures and ancient artifacts. On 700-year-old bottle of wine, archaeologists discovered a bottle of wine in an ancient Roman tomb, estimated to be around 1,700 years old, containing liquid that may still be drinkable. This bottle is currently housed at the Palatinate Museum in Speyer, Germany. According to expert evaluations, the wine dates back to around 325 AD and was found in the tomb alongside a few other broken bottles used as grave goods. The reason the wine has remained in liquid form for thousands of years is that it was sealed with beeswax rather than a cork, which would have decayed over time and allowed the wine to evaporate. After 1,700 years, the liquid may have lost its wine characteristics, turning into a strange liquid mixture. The bottle is described as made of greenish-yellow glass, with a capacity of 1.5 liters and a handle shaped like a fish. It is believed to have been produced locally and is considered the oldest bottle of wine in the world. At the bottom of the bottle, there is a layer of clear liquid, while the upper portion contains a brown-yellow mixture. In addition to the ancient bottles, the tomb also contained the remains of a man and a woman. The man is believed to have been a notable figure in Rome. Historians suggest that the bottle of wine was prepared for the man's journey to the afterlife. For some time, experts have been debating whether or not to open the bottle of wine. Despite curiosity, no one has dared to uncork this tightly sealed bottle. Ludger Tecampe, the head of the wine preservation team in Speyer, stated that no one can definitively say what is inside the bottle. If opened, the liquid could be damaged by exposure to air. Preliminary analysis suggests a thick layer of olive oil was used to preserve the wine, enhancing its effectiveness. Microbiologically, the wine may not be spoiled, but it won't provide a sensory thrill. To this day, the ancient wine bottle remains one of the museum's most captivating exhibits, attracting visitors to the Palatinate Museum. The Weeping Statue Lakeview Cemetery in Cleveland, Ohio, is not only the final resting place for thousands, but also a destination that attracts visitors due to its astonishing secrets. One of its notable features is the statue known as the Angel of Death, which rests on the grave of Francis Hassero, a prominent businessman. The statue, crafted from bronze and life-sized, boasts intricate details that symbolize a life that has ended. Most strikingly, black tears flow down the cheeks and neck of the statue, creating an eerie sensation for those who gaze upon it. This phenomenon of the tears not only produces a bizarre effect, but also evokes a sense of mystery and intrigue. It is believed that the black liquid results from a chemical reaction when the bronze material interacts with air, water, and CO2 over time, leading to oxidation. While no one knows exactly when the statue began to cry, or if this was the original intention of the sculptor, the combination of this strange effect and the chilly atmosphere of the cemetery creates a profoundly impactful and evocative space. Lakeview Cemetery remains open to the public daily from 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., allowing visitors to explore the mysteries and uniqueness of the site. Each individual can find peace and experience a range of emotions in the face of the beauty and wonder of this cemetery, with the hope that the departed rest in tranquility and that the unique artworks leave a lasting impression on all who visit. Strange Stones, growing like living bodies. The small town of Costesti in Romania is home to many strange, unique stones that have captured the attention of geologists and tourists alike over the years. These objects seem to be dissatisfied with their original shapes, gradually changing form by swelling over time, giving the impression that they have the ability to grow and even move. For this reason, it's no surprise that these peculiar geological specimens are referred to as living stones. Known as trovants, 
These stones have sparked much debate about their origins and how they function. Some experts believe that trovants are cohesive blocks of sandstone with a hard outer layer of sand, somewhat resembling a chocolate candy. This outer shell is actually harder than the surrounding stones, which helps them withstand erosion, allowing them to emerge from the ground. This explains why the stones are thought to be able to move. When it rains, water reacts with the mineral content of the surface layer, causing the inner material to seep out, making the stone appear larger. This explains why they are believed to grow. A similar process can form separate lumps that detach from the mother stone, resembling bubbles. Witnessing this phenomenon makes it seem as if the stones are giving birth. Of course, this geological transformation occurs very, very slowly. It is estimated that the stones in Romania grow less than 5 centimeters over 1,200 years. Upon analyzing the structure of these stones, scientists found no mineral differences between the core and the surrounding sand layer. The binding material in the stone primarily consists of carbonate compounds. Florin Stoican, a manager at Buila Venturarida National Park, noted that trovants are generally egg-shaped or spherical. They are likely formed due to prolonged and intense seismic activity during the Miocene epoch. According to this theory, shockwaves emitted from the Earth compressed sand deposits and cemented limestone to create these spherical rocks. These minerals act like cement, binding various sediment particles together. These stones have existed for around 7 million years in a delta region with abundant limestone deposits. Here, layers of sediment, including sandstone and siltstone, were accumulated and transported from across the continent by a prehistoric river. Over millennia, various minerals have drifted in and dissolved into a special solution. This solution envelops the pebbles and sand below, resulting in the unique geological form of trovance that we observe today. Roman City in Egypt Egyptian archaeologists have recently announced the full discovery of an 1-800-year-old Roman city located in Luxor, southern Egypt. This city thrived during the 2nd and 3rd centuries and is the most significant city found in the eastern part of Luxor. The archaeologists uncovered numerous residential buildings, two pigeon towers, and many workshops. Inside the workshops, there remains a collection of jars, vessels, tools, and even Roman bronze coins. This is a rare archaeological find in Egypt, as this region typically yields only temples and tombs. In 2021, authorities announced the discovery of a 3,000-year-old lost golden city west of Luxor, which archaeologists consider the largest ancient city ever found in Egypt. Ancient Rock Art with Mysterious Messages Mysterious ancient rock paintings over 6,000 years old have piqued the curiosity of researchers and history enthusiasts regarding ancient China. Discovered scattered across the hills of Nanyang, Henan, these artworks serve as enigmatic messages from millennia past, marking the presence and creativity of early humans. Archaeologists in Nanyang have documented a series of petroglyphs, or ancient rock paintings, featuring various designs. Meticulously crafted on granite and quartz sandstone, they showcase the skill and ancient artistry of humans. These rock paintings typically exhibit two distinct design styles, linear carving and dot carving. The diversity and richness in design reflect the cultural and artistic development of the ancient communities in this region. The rock paintings in Nanyang are not merely artistic creations. They are part of the broader rock art system of the Central Plains, considered the cradle of Chinese civilization. This underscores the historical significance and value of these works. According to a study published in 2012, the rock paintings in Nanyang date from the Neolithic period to the Bronze Age, approximately 6,000 to 11,000 years ago. However, the purpose, function, and cultural significance of these artworks remain a mystery, waiting to be further explored. Researchers have proposed various interpretations of the meanings behind these paintings. Some suggest they might be part of an early writing system, an astronomical calendar, or even an expression of ancient human ideology. The curiosity and anticipation for new discoveries continue, making the rock paintings of Nanyang an exciting subject of study in the field of archaeology. The ancient world is always shrouded in mystery, leaving us with countless puzzling artifacts. If any of the discoveries mentioned above stand out to you, please share your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on more fascinating discoveries. For now, goodbye and see you next time.